Hello, my name is Dr. Philip Foster and this is Maximum Change TV. I wanted to talk to you today about the future. Um, last year, uh, a, a colleague and I wrote a chapter that's in this book, Leadership 2050, Critical Challenges, Key Contexts and Emerging Trends. And this is actually an Emerald um, publication and you can find it uh, out there on Amazon. Again, it's called Leadership 2050. Uh, our chapter was actually chapter two, and the title of the chapter was Envisioning Leadership in 2050 for Future Scenarios. And what we did is uh, Dr. Suderman and I came up with four scenarios for the future. Now, one of those scenarios that we came up with, uh, we kind of find this coming back to us over and over and over again in the things that we're reading, and that is basically this theme about um, individuals linking in with some sort of technology. Uh, we actually had uh, the scenario biocircuitry leadership, high pod leadership, murmuration leadership, and autom uh, automaton leadership or automation leadership. Now, the, the uh, idea that I had was that um, people are connected into the grid, the World Wide Web, whatever it is called in the year 2050, we don't know because we're not there yet, but it's whatever the next generation of internet is at that time. And so one of the scenarios that we presented in here was this idea that uh, the economies have collapsed, the work uh, as we know it has collapsed, so the workforce of the future is totally different than what we know it to be today. And so the scenario was that individuals were um, set up with this docking harness that, that was added to their body. It was either connected to their head or something. We don't know where it is. We just presented the scenario that they were fitted with this docking harness where they actually connect, connect directly into the World Wide Web or the Internet and that they spend their days locked in some sort of working pod where they uh, are connected in and that leadership or the, those that are in control of the day-to-day -day, uh, activities uh, have this uh, new uh, sense of uh, control over them where they're, they're not just uh, controlling, you know, am I doing A, B, and C? They're controlling even everything that, we, that the individual thinks. So this is really uh, one of those uh, future scenarios. It's a little bit on the scary side. And then um, what we said was that, uh, that this is kind of the new cubicle farm uh, maybe even this, uh, this pod that you sit in that you connect into the internet is in your home, like this office here where I'm at in my house might have this pod that I sit in and maybe I have some sort of screen or, or a shield over my head to uh, do virtual reality in some sort of way. Now the reason why I'm talking about this is because uh, Dr. Suderman and I keep finding these themes coming up over and over and again and uh, and. Uh, Dr. Suderman has put me onto a book that I'm getting ready to read called Seven Eves, and uh, I'm looking forward to that because he says some of the themes that we presented in this, this text are, are coming up again in that text as well. So here's why I want to talk about it. Uh, last night I was reading an article. Uh, I, I read a lot of articles on Flipboard, and the interesting article I found was that Microsoft was taking their virtual reality um, helmet that they, they've created and they believe that this is going to replace the desktop computer. So basically we'd put this uh, helmet on our head that has a, a screen in front of us and when you turn the virtual reality is there and so it was really cool. Um, I'm not here to sell what Microsoft has or Google Glass or any of those others. I'm just saying that the concept of being connected into the internet, this is just one step toward that uh, docking harness. Now, I don't know if we will ever become a one with, uh, with the internet. Uh, some people call it singularity. I don't know if that's really going to happen. I have no idea what the future really holds, but it's really cool to look at the technologies that are in development today and how these scenarios that we play out in our imagination could come to pass. Now, why do we create these scenarios? Well, you know, I could have said, well, I'm, I'm writing a, fic a fiction book on uh, the future and I wanted to talk about how horrible the work conditions were going to be in the future. And so uh, there was this uh, control and maybe the, the, uh, the hero, you know, breaks everyone free, kind of like a Matrix uh, type situation. So 
the, the reality is we don't write these stories to come up with just a cool story of imagination. What we're trying to do is create scenarios of what if. Now, obviously, it's not ideal to, to have someone locked into a pod all day and every, every moving, waking, thinking moment is controlled by someone else. Uh, that is certainly um, very dict dictatorial in, in that regard. The idea, though, is when we come up with these scenarios and we say, what if this happens? We are able to move from here and now, which at the time that I'm speaking this, and, and this goes out on the net, it's 2016, and I'm saying, what if in 2050, this is the way the world is? Now, I truly believe that, um, that we're going to see some technologies here quicker than others. Uh, it's interesting. I was listening to a radio program today. It was like a news program, and they were uh, talking about how they they imagined in the year 2012 or 2002, some it was in the 2000s, that we would have electric cars. Well, the reality is, in 2016, when this was uh, produced here, uh, we do have electric cars. Um, you know, Elon Musk and the Tesla is is the dominant thing in the headlines all the time. Elon's got a new uh, new, you know. Tesla coming out uh, very soon, and he's working on that. And <clears throat> I own a hybrid car, which is part electric, part gas model, and that works for me because I do a little bit of distance traveling. So we we come up with these scenarios so that we can better navigate the here and now to the there and then. So whatever happens between now and then is the scenarios help us to determine how we're going to navigate around those. Now, obviously, we would want to create scenarios that are positive sometimes because those are goal-oriented scenarios. But we also want to come up with scenarios that are, are maybe dark forces, or black swans, the unusual. Because what we want to do is say, what if... Um, I liken this back into the 90s when I was in corporate America in the, in the early 2000s when we had disaster recovery plans for our organizations. And I know they're still out there today. Basically, scenario planning is your company's strategy disaster recovery plan. What happens if this comes? Um, so, you know, there's many different scenarios that we work with. This is one of the things that I do on a regular basis with clients. We're talking about the what ifs of the future. So I highly encourage you to check out a book like uh, 2050. I'm going to check out Seven Eves that my colleague, Dr. Suderman, recommended to me. But also wanted to mention uh, my, my text, The Open Organization. It's a template for the 21st century organization. It's a new era of leadership and organizational development. It can be found on Amazon right now, both in print and in ebook. So you might want to check that out on Amazon, The Open Organization, second edition. So that you can find that right now and uh, it'll ship within days of you ordering it. Also, uh, you might want to check us out on the web at MaximumChange.com if you're interested in uh, doing some scenario development or some what-if planning for the future of your organization. I'm not talking five years out. I'm talking 10, 15, 20, 50 years out. Where is your organization going to be? If you're interested in an assessment on that and whether or not we can help you or maybe you some, need some leadership coaching, uh, go to our website, MaximumChange.com. Reach out to us. I'd be glad to help you. I work with clients all around the world via Skype and other methods. You can also follow me on uh, Twitter at Maximum Change. And, of course, this video is appearing on uh, YouTube, and that can be found under the Maximum Change TV branding. So, so glad you're here. I really am happy to be bringing you this information. Think about the future. Ask the question, what if? What if this happens, and what do we do about it? So that's all I have. Have a great day. See you soon.